How's it going guys and welcome back to another episode of the AFC Wimbledon Road to Glory career mode and this is going to be episode number 71 of this series and before we do get into anything I've just got to apologize really there hasn't been a video in four days and you may be able to tell that this is going to be a post commentary episode of this series and unfortunately that is the reason why there hasn't been a video in four days as well basically to sum it up I've had an issue with the original document of this series. I did a whole live commentary of episode 71. I still kept the original footage though. Luckily, I still had the raw footage. It just meant that the original file with all the live commentary stuff got corrupted. So I had to re-edit everything all over again. And with, with how busy I've been recently, I've been having exams and, you know, trying to prepare for everything like that. It's been a little bit difficult to get this one done, but finally I've got it done, and we are going to be bringing this post-commentary episode, the first of the series. Hopefully you guys still enjoy it, even though it is a post-commentary. I still felt like I needed to bring you guys this episode, because there, there are some really juicy games in this one, including this one against Manchester United, the first game of the episode. And yeah, this one is going to be very interesting. Looking at United's lineup, they've got some interesting players in there. They've got Bale in there. They've obviously got Rooney up front. And they've got Pereira at Cam, which kind of surprised me a little bit, considering they've got players like Robben on the bench. But this game would certainly go down in the history of one of the best games of the series. Right there, that was a brilliant opportunity for Strandberg. He probably should have at least put it on target, but he couldn't even find it. And then hear what you're about to see is the biggest blunder from a defender I've ever seen on Legendary. And it's an absolutely horrific mistake from Marcus Rojo. And of course it is going to be Solanke who ends up tucking it away. He's a goal poacher. He knows how to find the back of the net. And I think that's already his fifth goal, which is just unbelievable this season. He's really been in great form at the start of the season. And then we did have a free kick here, a really good opportunity as well. And it would be Obito, who surprisingly has very, very good free kicks. And he would attempt to shoot this one from distance 40 yards out. And it's a really good save by Romero. Again, that was another crazy reaction that I had to that free kick because I almost managed to score it. And had that been on live commentary, I think you guys would have enjoyed that. But then we get another really good opportunity here. A lot of space does open up. And it is going to be Mark McLeod who comes off the bench in this game. And he does end up scoring. Obviously, if you watch this series two seasons ago, when we were in the championship, this guy is the sole reason we're in the Premier League today. He scored the goal to win it for us. And he was the reason we got promoted. Had he have not scored that goal that day, we might not even be in the Premier League at this stage. We might not be as far into this career mode and doing so well as we are. Uh, but yeah, that's just thankful also Mark McLeod. And again, it's another really good opportunity here. John Sutar intercepting and does end up finding the back of the net. He got taken down in the process, but it doesn't matter. He makes it 3-0 in this game. And this game was just getting out of hand. I mean, Manchester United, they really couldn't contain us whatsoever. And it's just it's really shoddy defending. I mean, he should have just cleared it. He knew that Sutar was going to put pressure on him. And he did end up scoring as well. A well-deserved goal for him. But as if it was going to be over there. Oh no, the legendary AI is so stupid. They allowed a City to go all the way through on goal. Pass it off to Valalba, who makes it 4-0 in this game. And this was in a matter of minutes. We literally just opened up the floodgates with the third goal. And then this goal happened. And, well, Manchester United, they were falling apart in the second half, to be honest. We ended up scoring, I think, three of our goals already in this second half and another really good opportunity here as it is going to be Didier Drogba's regen going through on goal and absolutely rinsing the defender just really shoddy defending again and he probably should have tucked that one away on his stronger left foot but he can't do so but it's still going to be a corner in the 90th and can we get that elusive fifth goal we try and whip this one in with Obita it's going to be Obita whipping it in from left back a really good delivery to his other fullback who is Patterson playing in this game and he does make it 5-0 and that is just an unbelievable result for us. We end up winning this game 5-0. That's right, 5-0. And when you see the full-time stats, you'll realise that, well, I, I don't even know. We just got, well, we were just very clinical in the game. I think that first goal really did capitulate Manchester United. They sort of fell apart after that goal when we did score with Sutar, intercepting off of Rojo. 
And you see now that we are going to be going into the youth squad. Taking a little look at the youth squad for this month. And we have a few good players that we could possibly promote. I think I end up promoting two of these players. Emilio, Emilio Vilna. I got his name wrong in live commentary. I almost got it wrong again. And also Jake Dunk we do end up trying to promote. I have to say out of the two youth players that we are trying to promote. Emilio Vilna. He looks like a very, very tasty youth player indeed. He could be involved in the first team as well by the looks of things maybe in some cup games because he looks like a very very hot prospect but we do have a few training sessions here that we're going to be going through and we do see that one player does grow from that session and then we see a little bit of a weird email again this was an interesting reaction from me in the live commentary a shame that I can't show you it but Emilio Vilna declined his contract because what I offered him was too long too long I offered him a one-year contract you can't offer any less than that in career mode it's not like I can offer him a six-month contract, and he declined it. He said it was too long. I, I just, I was absolutely dumbfounded. I didn't understand it whatsoever, so I've just left him in the Youth Academy for now, because obviously, he isn't exactly the brightest, so we're just going to leave him in the Academy for now, maybe promote him a bit later on. We also do take a little look at Jake Dunk there. Looks like an okay youth player. Nothing really too special. I think we've got some better players in his position from the academy that we can maybe play in the first team when it comes to cup games. And then we do also give Mislav Orsic a new contract. He did ask for one. And we do go ahead and give him what I thought was not as much as he actually would have wanted. He only wanted 25 grand a week. And I was happily going to give that to him. And then in the next session, we do see that Wolford is up to a 75 now. And Orsic, after that, does end up accepting his contract. And to be honest, he has been a player... Well, when we first signed him, he was very, very disappointing. But now that he's sort of grown into the team a bit, he started to get a bit better. He's coming back from injury for this game against Newcastle, playing at Cam. He's just really, really been playing a lot better recently. And obviously, at the end of last season, he sort of rejuvenated his campaign. He scored quite a few cracking goals as well. But he's still going to be the post-king for me. He just... I, I don't know what it is. He just seems to try and miss on purpose every single time. And it is a little bit frustrating. But we are top of the league going into this next game against Newcastle United. And we have got the best goal difference as well by a long way. I think in second place, the best goal difference for the, the next place team is something like two or something ridiculous like that. So we've had a really, really prolific start to the season. Scoring a lot of goals and not conceding that many as well, which is very, very important. And we do get a good opportunity here in this game with Orsic going for a shot. And unfortunately, it is saved. But this game did have, well, it, it was one of those games where I was a little bit surprised. Off the back of a 5-0 comprehensive win, I would have expected a bit more from this game. We had a few opportunities. We were sort of trying to break Newcastle down. But their defence was very solid up until the 61st minute where Maitland-Niles would get through. And he would end up scoring his first Premier League goal for Wimbledon. But I have to say, after we ended up winning the previous match against Manchester United 5-0, I was a little bit surprised that this match, well, it, it took us all the way to the 60th minute to get the opening goal of the game. But I can't complain, Maitland-Niles has been in good form. He's really done well since he's come in. He's chipped in with a few goals and I'm very, very happy with the way he's made an impact into the team. And his goal would be the only goal of the game. We would end up winning thanks to him. And it was a very solid result. It could have gone either way though. And I think we got a bit lucky to get a 1-0 win in that one. And now we are going to take a little look at our Europa League group stage as well. We've got a few interesting teams in there. Porto being the main one that could be a bit of a threat. We've also got Hiran Veen and also Rosenborg too. Other, those other teams, I, I don't really think they're going to be too much of an issue, really. Arsenal's group, I mean, they've, they've got a really tough group, haven't they? They've got Shamrock Rovers, the mighty Shamrock Rovers. But going into this game against Rosenborg, I knew it was going to be a tough game. And the main reason I'm picking such a strong side for this game is the fact that I don't want to underestimate teams like this because I feel like they're going to have a few secret, secret weapons. And I just feel like if I just pick a, a weak side... They're just going to surprise me and I'm not going to get the result that I deserve or should have deserved if I would have picked a better team. But that was the sort of logic I was going with into this game. We would get a very good opportunity on the stroke of half-time. Conan playing up front for this game, having a shot and his right foot, like I've said many times before, is non-existent. 
And I don't know why he didn't just take it with his left foot. Because it would have been a guaranteed goal then at the near post. And we got very, very lucky that we didn't concede there. Jensen, how on earth did he blaze that one over the bar from literally a couple of yards out? I, will, I, I don't even know to this day. And then Sutar gets another good opportunity for us this time. And again, I just don't understand how he's put that header over the bar. At least it should be on target. And then it is going to be to the 90th minute. One final chance maybe for Lalba. Playing this one forward all the way to Yukonen. And Yukonen does end up scoring this time in the 90th minute. And if we do go on to win this game 1-0, that is going to be a very important goal from Yukonen. He hasn't really chipped in with many goals as I would have liked so far since we signed him. From, I do believe, Dallas Cowboys. I think, I think it, that was the team we bought him from. But he really hasn't impressed me on the goal scoring front. He hasn't really done too well. But that goal is going to be very important. I mean, if he's going to score a goal and it's going to have some importance, then I'd rather he scored in this game because that got us the win. And it got us the three points to give us a perfect start to our Europa League group stage. And I want to take this competition seriously this year. I feel like we've got a good opportunity to maybe go on and win it with the squad that we do have. And for the next game against Swansea, we would be picking a little bit of a rotated side because obviously this game would be a few days later after the other one. And yeah, look at the goal difference again. All of these teams have such poor goal difference, but we've only conceded one goal this season. Spurs in second have conceded four. That is just unbelievable. We've played how many games? Five or six this season so far. And we've only conceded one goal. Unbelievable stuff. But going into this game, I was hopeful that our superior goal difference would play a part. And hopefully we could get a win in this one. And he started off very bad there with, I think that was Emnez having a shot. And I was a little bit worried because I know he's a glitch player. I know he gets to quite a high overall. And I think he is in this career mode. But never mind glitch players. Gabriel Miranda, our scout future star, does end up scoring the first goal of the game. He opens up the scoring with a fantastic finesse shot. It's a real trademark for him. He's just able to cut inside. He doesn't really have the pace. He doesn't really have the strength. But when he does get inside, you're almost sure that he's going to put it on target. And he does this time. And what an effort that was from Sigurdsson. Unbelievable. He scored a banger against us last season. And almost did there. But it wouldn't matter in the end. Because... Swansea would get back into the game and I just can't believe the way they did it. I mean, Emnez, the, uh, another situation where live commentary would have really helped me express my emotions. I mean, he wasn't even facing the goal when he took the shot on. It was just unbelievable. But would we get an opportunity to maybe get our lead back again and continue our really good start to the Premier League season? It would be Strandberg making it 2-1. But the real question is, would that be the goal? To win us the game. If it is, that is going to be another very important goal for us. And Strandberg again with a really cool composed finish. Another player that hasn't really done too much. Similar to Gabriel Miranda. Not really done too much on the goal scoring front. And hasn't really contributed too much. But Valalba almost secured the result there in the 90th. And then Solanke would go for a shot. Over the bar, unfortunately. But we do end up winning this game 2-1. And that win would ensure that we continue our perfect start to the season. A really, really important win. And I have to say, last season, we would have gone on to lose that game. It was a very, very good performance. And to end off the episode, we will be having a bit of player training. And again, this time we see a couple of players going up. Clark and also Roberts again going up in overall. But this will be the end of this episode of this career mode. And if you have enjoyed this episode, make sure you leave a like on the video and subscribe if you haven't already. Obviously, it is a post commentary. So maybe you guys don't really enjoy this format. Let me know in the comments down below. But apart from that, guys, I'm going to have to leave it there. And I'll see you next time for another video. Thanks for watching.